Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio and welcome to the first official video of our NPC system series. In episode zero, we just kind of talked project setup and also got our NPC ready to go. He's animated to walk and idle and we've just set up a collider and rigid body. In this episode, we're gonna set up our first state, which will be the patrol state. This will allow you to select from as many positions as you want and have the NPC just roam back and forth between them while animating, pausing, and also flipping to face the correct direction. Let's get started. To get started, let's just set up a folder to hold all of these new scripts we'll be writing. We'll call this one NPC Scripts. Inside of there, I'm going to right click, go to Create, and make another C Sharp script. That said, if you're using Unity 6, you'll want to create a mono behavior script, which is essentially just the same thing. We'll call this one NPC underscore Patrol. First off, we'll just be using two namespaces, the System Collections and Unity Engine. So if you're in Unity 6, you'll need to add the System.Collections namespace. After this, we need to make it so our NPC actually knows where he's patrolling. So let's begin by setting a public vector to array called patrol points. You make sure to save that, and then back in Unity, we can click on our NPC parent object, and here we're just gonna add the patrol script. You'll see now that we can make a drop down with as many patrol points as we want. I'll just do two for now to keep this simple. And at the moment, you can see that his current position in the transform is roughly negative 36 and two, so we'll put that down there. And then we'll just move him over to another position, and then we'll add those coordinates in. Now that our NPC knows the points he's patrolling between, we can go ahead and actually get him moving. Let's begin by creating a public float called speed. I'll initialize this to two, but you can change it in the inspector later on if you like. In order to make him move, we're gonna need some physics. So let's make a reference to that rigid body we created and call this one RB. I'm gonna make this one private, and that's because in the start method, we can program this code to find the rigid body all by itself. Here we'll just say that its rigid body is equal to, we'll tell it to just look on itself for a component called rigidbody2d and fill that reference in. Now, while we've got a list of patrol points, we will need this NPC to be able to keep track of which one is his current target. So here we'll make a public vector2 called target. Now we're starting to get close to being able to move him. So in update, we'll tell his rigid body that its velocity is gonna be equal to direction times speed. However, we don't currently know our direction, so we'll have to figure that out. To do that, we're just gonna create a local variable, which is a vector two called direction. Here, to know our direction, we just need to take our target and subtract our transform's position. However, you'll notice if I highlight over this that it's saying that it can't subtract a vector two from a vector three. That's because our target is currently a vector two, while our transform position comes through with all three x, y, and z values. So we'll just cast our target as a vector three. At this point, we're very nearly ready to run our first test, except that even though our NPC knows what his patrol points are, it doesn't know which one is his first target. So in our start method, let's just tell it that target is equal to patrol point zero, which will just select the first element in our patrol points array. Now when I press play in the game, you can see that my NPC moves towards that first position just fine. However, we've got a number of problems. First off, he's only going to the first point, but also you'll notice that if I move him away, he goes to the right spot. However, his speed changes. As he goes closer to the object, he moves slowly. And if I drag him further away, he moves more quickly towards the target. Let's go ahead and fix that. Now, the reason he's changing speed like that is because here when we calculate our direction, we're finding the difference between where he wants to go and where he is. So say he's 30 units away on the X from his target, it's gonna multiply that difference of 30 times his speed of two and make him move at a speed of 60. However, when he's close, it might only be a difference of one. It'll multiply that by two and have him move at a speed of two. Obviously we don't want that. So let's put this whole target and transform position in brackets and then we'll add dot normalized. What this does is just set those numbers to a magnitude of one, meaning they have very little impact on the NPC's actual speed and he'll move at a nice regular speed. Next, let's solve the problem of our NPC only ever going to his first patrol point and not resetting his target after that. To do this, we're gonna set up a new method. It'll be a private void one called set patrol point. Now to be able to set patrol points, we're gonna to have to keep an index of which point we are currently at. So let's head up top and create a private integer called current patrol index. Now at the start of the game, rather than go to patrol point zero, let's set our target as patrol points current patrol index. Now in set patrol points, each time we reach our point, 
we want to set a new index. So we'll say that our current patrol index will be equal to its current value, current patrol index, plus one, meaning we'll just increment our way through the array. Now that we've incremented our array, we can set our target to be that new patrol point, current patrol index, the same line of code we wrote in start. With that, we're very nearly ready to run our next test. However, we do need to actually check so that our code knows when we've reached a patrol point. So here, after we've set our velocity, we're gonna do a check. We're gonna do if vector2.distance, here, we're going to find the distance between this transform position, meaning our NPC, and its target. Now, if that distance is very small, say less than 0.1, we know that we want to set a new patrol point, so we can call that method at this time. Now, this is still going to have some errors, but we're ready to run our next test. Now, when we press play, he moves to his first patrol point, then heads to the next one. However, you'll notice at this point that I'm getting an error message in my console. That's just simply that we've reached the end of our array. It's trying to now look for element two in our patrol points, but that element doesn't exist. So let's fix that. Now, fortunately, this is a pretty easy fix. What we just wanna do is take our current patrol index here, put brackets around it, and we're gonna use a modulus operator, which is just a percent sign. Essentially, in practice, what it just does is makes it so that when we get to the end of our list, it starts back at zero again. And just like that, we can get in the game. He'll patrol back and forth. And now when he reaches the end of the list, he just heads back over again. If we wanted to, we could go in here now and add some new elements. Let's say have him move up just a little bit for the third one and then return back near the first one, but perhaps also in a rectangular fashion. And there you go. He automatically adapts to those new values and just keeps going. And we do still have some problems. We'd like to get him animated. We'd also like to have him facing the right direction and maybe add a bit of a pause, if we want, at each of these points as well. Let's go ahead and make that happen. We'll start by adding the option to have him pause when he reaches a patrol point. But first, let's just make a couple little tweaks here. First, I'm gonna set target to be private as we don't actually need to see it in the inspector now that we know it's working. I'm also just gonna take the public float speed and just move it up here. For organization's sake, I like to keep my public variables at the top and my private ones down below. All right, let's set a public float for our pause duration, and I'm gonna set mine at one and a half seconds to start. And we're also gonna need a flag to track when the NPC is paused or not. So here we'll make a private bool for that. Now, down in update, we'll just set things up so that if this NPC is paused, we're gonna to wanna to add curly brackets. And now we wanna do two things. First, we wanna set our velocity to zero, and we can set it to zero by just saying equals vector2.0. We're then gonna type in return. Now we just need a way to actually toggle his paused status. So first off, in set patrol point, anytime we've reached our patrol point, we want to pause the game. So we'll set is pause to true. And then after we reset it to a new location, we're gonna to wanna to unpause. So we can set it to false here. The only problem, of course, is that this method runs in a single frame. So it will pause and unpause without doing any waiting. And there isn't actually a way to make a method pause. So what we're gonna do is change this from being a private void method to being a coroutine. And we do this by typing I enumerator at the top. Now, immediately after we pause the NPC, we'll just type in yield return new wait for seconds. And here in our brackets, we'll put the pause duration. That way this coroutine will not run past this line until it's waited one and a half seconds. It will then set a new location and unpause the NPC. One other important change is that we can no longer call this method by typing set patrol point. Instead, we need to call start coroutine, and then in brackets put set patrol point, the name of that routine. At this point, we can run another test, and you'll see that each time he reaches a patrol point, he does in fact wait one and a half seconds. All right, next up, let's add some animation to this NPC. I'm gonna start by coming down by my rigid body where I'm storing all of my component references, and we'll make a new private animator reference here called anim. Then in start, similar to what we did with the rigid body, we'll just tell it that the anim is equal to, and here we'll get component animator. The only problem is that the animator's not actually on this parent game object as we put our animator and sprite on the child. So in this case, we'll have to type in get component in children animator. Now, whenever we pause the game, right after we set is pause to true, we can just tell our anim that it should play the idle animation. Here, if we take a look in our animator, you'll remember that we called the states idle and walk. 
we're not actually typing the name of the specific animation here, it's these states. So whatever you called them here, including proper capitalization, that's what you'll have to use in your code. Finally, at the bottom of set patrol point, we'll then get our anim to play the walk animation as he's now ready to walk to his next patrol point. No setup necessary here, things are mostly working. You'll notice he idles at his patrol points and walks in between. However, when we first started it, you'll notice that he was still in idle, even though he should have been walking. He's also still facing the wrong direction. Let's get to work. So first, the reason he idled at the beginning rather than walking is because we set his target in the start method, but don't actually tell him which animation to play. That only happens in set patrol point. So instead, let's get rid of this line, and as soon as the game starts, let's call that coroutine set patrol point. That way it will update his target as well as his animations right away at start. Now the last thing for us to do is to actually get him flipping. And we're going to do this by going to the parent object and we're actually just going to use his local scale. Here you can see that when we change his scale x from a 1 to negative 1, he flips to the left side and a positive number flips him to the right. So in our code, let's just come down below where we calculate his direction and determine whether or not we need him to change which direction he's facing. We'll do this with an if statement where we'll check if his direction dot x is less than 0. Now if it is on his left, but his transform local scale dot x is greater than zero, we have a problem. We also have to account for the other possibilities. And now we're just going to check if his direction dot x is greater than zero, but his transform dot local scale x is less than zero, meaning he's still facing left. Now if either of these two things is true, we need to flip him around. So we'll just go to the next line and set it so that his transform dot local scale is equal to and unfortunately, we can't just set as x, we have to set all three values. So we'll make a new vector 3. And in here, I'm just going to copy this transform.localscale.x, but we'll multiply it by negative 1. That will flip him around. And then for the y and z, we can just put transform.localscale.y, and then do the same thing for z, meaning they'll just stay the same as they already are. And with that, we now have an NPC who moves around, faces the right direction, he's animated, and we can set as many patrol points as we like. Hope you found that one helpful. In the next video, we're gonna set up a wander mode for this NPC where we can just give him a general area and have him patrol there at will within that area with some logic for him to change position if he is bumping into anything. Hope to see you in that video. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.